Okay, so this is the audio commentary for 24 Hour Movie Marathon 3, the intro, and this is James, aka DVD Collector 1974's movie room, with all of his Simpsons figures and his, uh, you know, collectibles and his movies. This is a great shot of his uh, epic movie room, and then we finally see him there, suffering with the eternal struggle of a movie collector. What movie to watch when you own so many? This is basically how I wrote it um, when I sent him the kind of little script. When he agreed to take part in this and be in the video, which was great, um, and he kind of added a few things of his own, including this line coming up where he says, um, "Star Wars, Luke." Luke just posted his marathon video. I thought that was kind of cool and funny. And uh, yeah, I really like this. It turned out great. I think his wife filmed this on the, on his phone or his iPad, something like that. And yeah, it just uh, I'm, I'm really excited that people kind of appeared in this. You know, other YouTubers, and it was kind of a collaborative kind of cameo thing where a lot of them appeared. And uh, I think this is a great way to start the video, something people weren't necessarily expecting. Uh, he sent me this um, great static shot of his TV so I could overlay the real beginning, uh, which is kind of a, uh, a silent movie, intertitle card kind of effect with no stereo productions. A Luke Ryan dream, which is the first reference of the video. Um, a Bart Simpson dream from The Simpsons. I just always loved that in one of those biblical episodes, so I included it here. And this is basically a dream. Uh, and the idea is that I'm dreaming about my old films. This is kind of a film I appeared in in 1998 called The Three Rascals. Just a home movie, not a real film, but you know. Um, it's where I kind of got uh, my love for filmmaking and making films myself. And then we go to 2003. This is Dumb and Dumber 3 The Kids, a film I made when I got a new camera. This is Misplaced from 2004. Basically just things I've kind of done. And uh, the idea is that I'm dreaming about them, and we got this kind of uh, silent movie-esque uh, track playing over the top. It's a royalty-free track, and uh, yeah, I did this effect in, in Sony Vegas. Uh, it took a while to get right with all the kind of. There's so many different ways you can make the grain and the you know the scratches and things come up. This is a clip from the first 24-hour movie marathon video in 2012 brings it kind of a uh, full circle and then we transition over into clips from 24 hour movie marathon 2 <laughs> 24 hours of movies back to the first one and so there's a theme going it's kind of running through all the things I've done up until this point and then this is kind of present day I guess you could call it and this was Connie's idea to kind of include me having memories of walking down this path before I end up where I end up and um, yeah Connie filmed this stuff and I think it looks great then this is just sped up to go along with the music and then we kind of end here on a TV uh, with Michael Keaton pictures in the background. In October 2013, I did a YouTube series called Michael Keaton Month. I reviewed a Michael Keaton film, or more than one, every single um, day of October 2013. And there'd always be a clip or a trailer shown on this little TV. And uh, the pictures were added throughout the month. And so it's just a kind of a throwback to this. And this thing playing on the TV is the intro to a 70s TV show called Future Cop. Long story behind why I like the intro to this, but I had it as my phone alarm for about a year. And so uh, it's just a real personal reference. And here I am here, a great shot by Connie. Uh, not necessarily great in looking at my ugly mug with my young offenders mustache and everything. The phone there actually had Connie's number on it. We didn't realize we had to kind of fuzz that out, unfortunately. Uh, this is another great shot from Connie. She's uh, great with the camera and you know getting the focus right and everything, including this shot where I reach over for the phone. As you can see, it's focused on me, then it focuses to my hand as I pick it up. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this kind of thing turned out. I think it looks great, and uh, it was filmed on Connie's Canon, I think, 550D um, DSLR. It might be a different make, but I think that's the one. So here we cut back to Connie. And this phone conversation, um, I wrote it, but you know we kind of improvised it at the same time. I had a vague idea of how it was going to go. So I filmed it with Connie first, and then I went back to the video and looked at everything I said when I was filming it. I was behind the camera doing the lines, and then I wrote down all those lines that I did at the time, and then I kind of read them off on location when we filmed this, so I could get the conversation right. Um, it was really hard with this scene because of the background, uh, the stream near where we were filming, that was very loud. So I had to kind of put that in the background of... Connie's phone so you could hear something otherwise the the transition to kind of the stream background noise and then no background noise is really jarring so I had to kind of spend a lot of time on the sound in this and it's not perfect but uh, I'm happy with it Connie was uh, really funny in this basically I just wanted her to play an exaggerated version of herself when she gets annoyed with me and uh, you know I thought it was pretty funny and uh, you know it's not exactly only fools and horses but you know I think it's a funny little scene and um, worked well and I was happy with how it turned out and, <laughs> and again, Connie was just 
coming up with these weird things to say, you know, like chopping my hair off and feeding it to Lily. Um, she just came up with that on the spot, and yeah. Um, so this little scene um, just kind of kicks it all off, and um, you know, brings it into the kind of the real beginning of the intro. This is like a pre 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 intro. I mean, there's so many little bits. You know, um, I probably overextended this thing more than it should have been, but it seems to have been received quite well online, so that's cool. Um, it took a while to get this shot coming up here where I run towards the camera so that Connie could get my face in focus and we did this about 10 times uh, finally got it going this little bit here where I say gotta be fast gonna fly now is like one of those kind of things that it sound, it doesn't sound right as a sentence and it's kind of inspired by James Rolfe who would um, sometimes in his Angry Video Game Nerd episode say things like that that didn't quite work as a sentence but just sounded funny so uh, I'm also the reference to the song Gotta Fly Now which is played now as the intro begins. Um, I got Connie to run up onto that bridge and do that overhead shot at the last minute. I thought that'd be a cool shot to add in. It wasn't originally uh, in the plan. Um, we filmed this shot right here and then I looked at the bridge and I went, can you just run up there? So Connie was great in kind of just putting up with me, kind of telling her to go there and go there and film this and film that, including this shot, which was really cool, you know, where she's focusing on me with the trees in the foreground being out of focus. I think it looked great. We did that about three times. I was sick of running by the end of the day, as you can imagine. We did this a few times as well, a bit of mis miscommunication on where she was going to be filming. Um, took a few tries to get that one right. And then, yeah, um, we kind of didn't, I didn't really plan this out that much in terms of like where where I'd be running and the shots. We just, just kind of did it on the fly. We went out for about three, four hours, something like that, maybe three hours. Maybe even two hours, I don't know, God knows. And then we come to this, um, the silent movie split screen sequence, which I came up with and I was quite happy with. I thought it was kind of original, I'd never seen it before, it's probably been done before, but it wasn't something I was copying from a film, it was something I just had in my head, and it turned out really well. I did this in one go, just one take, and um, I had a very small dent in the grass, which I used to mark where the line would be basically so I could figure out how to act it and this is kind of a tribute to silent films and you know during the marathon itself which happened before this um, we filmed all this after the marathon uh, I'd seen some Buster Keaton movies for the first time and just fell in love with them that's probably the best bit right there where I put my hand through and you can vaguely hear the silent movie music I, I like the effect on that very happy with how it turned out now this, I'll probably go into this in detail in a separate video about this sequence specifically but there's a special effect there which didn't quite get across and I just I didn't put too, um, too much effort into it and I should have but at the same time I think I was going a bit overboard and I'll explain that in that feature. This close up was Connie's idea because um, you couldn't really see the banana peel at all and it was kind of a, an old rotten, well it wasn't rotten but it was uh, a banana that, that was nearing you know the end of its uh, shelf life and so it was falling apart you can, you can see I slipped on it there if you, if you really look closely but um, you know there's a bit here where I throw it and it wasn't supposed to actually fall out of my hand but it kind of split in half and most of it flew away so I had to kind of just improvise and the idea is that I'm trying to throw it away but it stuck to my hand I try and throw it away again and it falls behind me if you look very closely and then I turn around and slip on it again and then we go back into the you know the rocky music uh, you know which again was used because I'm running and just it just seemed fitting and I couldn't use the original track because YouTube wouldn't allow it so I got this 8-bit rendering that someone made on YouTube when I used that instead. Um, there is a special feature on this Blu-ray where uh, you can see the intro with the original Gonna Fly Now uh, Bill Conti track, but at the same time I think it probably works better with the 8-bit one because it's what everyone saw when it came out on YouTube and has a certain charm to it. Now I took my hat off here because I had the idea to use a clip that I had filmed in um, uh, in America, in New York, in Central Park, and this very quick thing, just very rough, but you know, you get the idea that I'm in Central Park, and that was an exact shot, scene reenactment of the ghost jogger in Ghostbusters 2. You can match them up, and it's pretty much identical. Um, so I took my hat off just to kind of use that clip because I was wearing similar clothes, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of have an actual movie location slash reenactment in the intro. Um, and this bit here, again, was leading into something that I hadn't planned on doing, but I thought it would be cool if I could get this YouTuber to make a cameo, because he'd made this video in the woods, and we were walking home, we were done filming, and I thought, you know what, it would be really cool if I got his old video and uh, used it like that. And this is a great shot from Connie again, uh, the deep focus there. Uh, another great shot coming up right here. Yeah, I love that, with the, the just the dark branches and the, the kind of... The bright background, the sea, the sun just creeping in there. This is another reference where it says, uh, where I say, um, he found me, 
Uh, I don't know how, but he found me as a reference to Back to the Future. I think Scott actually got that one, uh, Cineram. And uh, yeah, here we go. This is another, the second YouTube cameo. It is Chill Pilgrim, uh, formerly known as Chill Pilgrim 1138. And this is a video he did where he was um, ranking all the Friday the 13th movies. And uh, yeah, I just love that. And, uh, you know, the, the trees on his end, you know, the, the, the leaves are out in, in full you know, greenery and stuff. And here it's, you know, the, the leaves are gone. So it doesn't quite work, but still. You know, I thought it was fun to have him involved, and here we go. We're in Philadelphia, the uh, the famous steps where Rocky ran up in you know the the, early, the late seventies, I should say, and uh, many years after that, you know, almost all the movies feature those steps. And uh, there you go. And we're in Philadelphia, and we filmed that just because you know I had no plan of using this in the the video, but I thought it'd be a cool way to to kind of set it all up. Twenty four hour movie marathon, like the Rocky title going across there. And, um, yeah, I love to get references into the marathon just for a bit of fun, you know, and uh, this was a huge reference, obviously, and being at a movie location, I think, was uh, really cool. This is uh, basically what the poster was, and I just put the title there uh, on the video as well. 24 Hour Movie marath Marathon 3, Days of Movies. So there we go. Um, and then we have this bit here, just before the intro really ends, where Connie's phone's going off, and that ringtone is a reference to uh, something Stone Cold Steve Austin was talking about in his uh, one of his podcasts around the time we were in America and listening to it. And he was talking about that new uh, iPhone ringtone. It was very funny, so we decided to use that in here. Just another personal reference for me and Connie to enjoy. And again, the, the Forrest Gump line, I just kept on running. You know, that was just complete ad-lib, and some people found that pretty funny. So, yeah, the idea is I just ran to Philadelphia, and, and this is another reference coming up, Kill Bill, obviously. Uh, Connie did a great job here. She didn't overdo it, I think, which uh, which makes it even funnier. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the kind of siren, the iron side, and uh, there we go. That's the intro. Thanks for listening. I made it finally. We're late. We're not late. It's fine. It's, just, it's good. It's good. We got plenty of time. <laughs>